Have you ever wanted to start a podcast but don't know how? Look no further than Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it's free of charge. And yes, actually completely free of charge. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more major po- podcasting platforms. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership necessary and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Once again, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M. Thank you for listening. Now enjoy the video. Greetings, lovers of lore. It's your host, Vicious Venus, and welcome to the newest installment of the Whimsical Whispers podcast. I know, I know, another book talk, but I could not resist because this book is very near and dear to me. Now, I'm not the type of reader that rereads books very often, but I have read this book five or six times, not counting the times I would flip to a random section just to read a few chapters. Plus, I'm a total fantasy geek, and this book is literally a fairy tale. The good kind, not the super gruesome, bloody ones. Anyway, as you guessed by the title of this episode, the book I'm talking about is The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. In today's episode, I just want to talk about all the things I like about this book. Keep in mind that these are not facts, these are just my opinions, and you are entitled to have your own. If you hate the book, that is completely okay. After listening to this episode, I would love to hear your opinions on the story and whatever I present in this episode, so that way we can engage in a Lovers of Lore discussion. Now, to start things off, I just want to summarize the book so you can get a better understanding. The Girl Who Drank the Moon is a story about a town that sacrifices the youngest baby every year to a witch that lives in the woods. However, the witch is actually kind and good, and every year she takes the abandoned child to the free cities that reside on the other side of the forest. Along the journey, the witch feeds the baby starlight, which not only keeps the baby full, but blesses the child and allows them to be the best version of themselves. One year, the witch feeds a child moonlight instead of starlight, which in turn gives the child magic powers. Because of this, the witch decides to raise the child as her own. But keeping the child stirs up a lot of trouble. And some of these problems include a man that wants to kill the witch, dangerous paper birds, a volcano that is about to explode, and a mysterious woman who seems to be the real danger all along. The book is jam-packed with problems and conflicts, yet in the end, everything concludes peacefully and happily. The first thing I want to commend the book for is the writing style. The writing style is so unique, and it goes well with the story. The chapters are written in such a magical way, it's like reading a tale or a myth. I've never really read a book that's quite like The Girl Who Drank the Moon. The writing style just gives it such a new feel to it. It's like I'm reading a different story. The descriptions are really nice, and to be honest, I know I'm just repeating myself, but it's really not like anything I've ever read before. It just has such a unique writing style. It's not like you just picked up a novel and you're reading it, but it's like you're actually immersing into this fantasy world. The descriptions are minimal, yet perfectly descriptive, and the settings are beautifully described. The world is built perfectly, and you just get a perfect, you just get like a really good feel of how the setting is placed and who the characters are. The writing style kind of just gives it a whole new dimension, and it's not something that I see being used a lot in a lot of our modern literature. 
Most books just kind of have a generic writing style. Sometimes it has a higher academic vocabulary level, but really that's just the difference. That's the only difference I find with these books. However, with The Girl Who Drank the Moon, the writing style really fits with the type of story that we see. The author wants to convey a more fairy tale, more childlike story, and through that we can see it through the writing itself. The writing is just so whimsical, it's so wonderful, it gives such a magical feel to the book, and it really does tie in the story in such a better way. I remember just reading the book and feeling very amazed at how it was written because it was just so surprising to read a book like this. The way things were described wasn't like how we'd usually read in regular books. It was just described in a way that was very minimal, yet it gave you the description you needed. It was also, the book did not have very high vocabulary. It has like a pretty much standard vocabulary so that like that way anybody could just pick up the book and understand what it's being, like what the words mean. To be honest, nothing annoys me more than a book that's highly recommended, but literally half the words are words I never knew existed. Which is something I really do appreciate, because although I love reading, I'm not an expert when it comes to high vocabulary words, so it's really good for me to read a book that is simple and easy to understand. Another thing I do want to talk about that I have mentioned before in the summary is the amount of conflicts presented in the book and how it was all concluded. I have never seen a book with so many conflicts and have it not turn out to be a series. Usually books with so many different conflicts end up being a series because they need more than one book to actually solve every conflict. However, in this book, the different conflicts all manage to be resolved in the end. Which, and I must say, the ending was a teensy bit anticlimactic, but it was a bit shocking to see all of these different problems all come together with one solution, which I think is quite clever writing. I honestly felt so much anxiety reading the summary of the book and thinking, There is so many problems going on. How is there not a sequel? How is there not a series to this book? It just surprised me so much that all of these problems could be ended in one single ending. I mean, are you kidding me? There is a volcano that is literally about to explode and destroy everything in its path. I think that might need a sequel to solve. But no, in the end, it did not. And honestly, I really did like that. I liked how simple, smooth, easy, and just overall nice how the ending went. And that's another thing. The ending wasn't super complicated or complex or anything like that. It was really simple. It was really just simple. And it really conveyed the theme of the book, which generically is love, I guess, a bit cheesy, but, you know, it's nice to just read a book with a simple theme like that. And the ending really did convey it, so I felt nice about that. (laughs) And overall, I just felt that the way everything concluded, all down to the final battle between Luna, the main protagonist, and the Sorrow Eater, our antagonist, it was just a really good ending. And like I said, not only was this like some sort of conclusion that wrapped up all of these problems, there was also a big theme behind it, which was love. And not only love, but accepting trauma and learning to get past those sad memories so that way you can make new and happy ones. The final battle with the Sorrow Eater wasn't much of a battle. It was just Luna trying to show her how to come to terms with her trauma and accept all the pain and sorrow she had gone through. Which, I know, a bit anticlimactic in my 
point of view, but again, really nice to hear, really nice to read. It's honestly, all around, just a nice, wholesome ending, and a bit bittersweet. And every time I reread the book, I'm just in awe at, like, how many problems there were from the beginning, and how all of them were just smoothly wrapped up like a present. Another thing I really do want to talk about are the characters themselves. Every character, well, almost every character, goes through such character development that it seems really, that it feels really realistic to me. From the beginning of the book, they have a certain view, they have something that they think about, and by the end of the book, their point of view on that thing might, like, change. Now, for some of the characters, it's most it's mainly something internal and something small and for other characters it's really big and life-changing for them however for some characters it's not really like their own character development it's more like something that just kind of happens to them and changes them a bit and for an example this is what happens to the protagonist luna since she was given magical powers at such a young age, she wasn't able to control them, which is why the witch had to lock it away, and on her 13th birthday, her magical powers would be unleashed again. For her, that's kind of like her character development, except nothing really happens to her herself. Instead, it kind of happens to, like, her situation. She goes from someone who literally knows nothing about magic to somebody who literally became one of the most powerful witches in the world. And she also learns a lot of things about herself, her family, about the world around her, and one big thing she learns is about sadness and how dangerous it can really be to you, your health, and how it can affect the people around you. As for the witch, she's like 500 years old, so I'll so obviously she forgets things a lot and one of her biggest character developments is learning to come in terms with her memories and along with the antagonist she also learns to accept sadness as a way of life instead of forgetting it and locking it away one of the reasons why she wasn't able to train luna in magic is because she was getting old and weak and she had forgotten most of the lessons that she was taught when she was a young girl Those lessons were often associated with really sad memories, and she wanted to keep them locked away because she didn't want to think about them that much. To her, sadness was dangerous. And it was, but it would become even more dangerous whenever she couldn't come to terms with it. There is so much character development going on with so many different characters, and to be honest, it would take an entire episode just talking about that which is why I implore you to go read the book because it's interesting seeing all these different characters and seeing how each and every one of them come to terms with their internal and external problems. Another thing I really do want to talk about is the magic and lore in this book. There is just so much like magical fantasy feel to this book it really warms my heart because again i'm a total fantasy lover fantasy is like one of my favorite genres and this book really has so much magical and fantastical elements in it everything from the moonlight and magicking to the fact that there are dragons well there's only one dragon but that's enough for me there's a swamp monster too so who wouldn't love that There's so much magic in this book, and it really just, it really just makes the story feel more like a fairy tale. The lore in this book is also really interesting. I don't want to explain it because I just want you to go read it and figure it out yourself, but the lore of the book is interesting. How they believe the world is created, how magic can be formed, and and basically just how magic is used it's quite interesting 
and it really helped in the whole world building and it just made the book more realistic in terms of building a world obviously because right now we don't have magic the magic and the lore in this book is very consistent there isn't any like contradictions that you might see in some other stories like for example if something happens and this is the effect the same thing happens there won't be a different effect the same thing will happen essentially there's no contradictions the magic the world the lore in the story it's just really simple there's not there's not many loopholes that i found personally but if you do find one please let me know depending on the platform you're using please comment down below but overall i really do like how the world was built and how the world was set up I really do like how they took certain themes and made it more fantastical and added more fantasy elements into it. For example, the Sorrow Eater, our antagonist, she gains power by eating and devouring other people's sorrow. So by doing this, she would literally create a farm of people who are just terribly sad and then feed off of their sorrow to gain like never-ending power. Which is quite interesting because I've never really seen people with that kind of power before. Like, how, who creates characters that can literally feed off of other people's trauma and, you know, sadness? And it's not only that, it's just all the magical characters, it's just how the world is built, and it's just how, like, the story is explained. Everything about it is just so consistent. It's like reading a fairy tale. I don't know how many times I'll repeat that, but it really does have its own style. It really does have its own story, its own setting, and it's just a really unique book to read. And I think that wraps it up for this week's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to this episode. I really do hope that I've convinced you to go pick up the book and read it. I left out so many things in the book. There are, there are so many things I did not talk about. I did not even mention to be honest. I kind of just rambled on and on about how much I love the characters and the story and the writing and I just did not talk about like what happened in the story itself because I really want you to go find the book pick it up and read it because it's such an amazing and underrated book in my opinion it's not a fact it's just an opinion so I really do hope that if you find the book pick it up give it a try and I really do hope you enjoy it anyway like i said before if you have any thoughts or anything to say about this book anything you'd like to add please do so depending on the platform you're using please comment down below just i would love to engage in a lovers of lore discussion with you about the book it would be so interesting and amazing to know what you think about it what your favorite part was or what your favorite character was in the book and your idea about the themes because like i said there are really interesting themes in the book that were used quite a lot in the ending and i'd like to see i'd like to read what you think about it anyway thanks again for listening to this week's episode and we will see you next week goodbye